Hello, 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 and welcome to the Crew Podcast. I am the visionary, Queen Angela, and welcome to season two. I want to thank you for tuning in and for all of your support throughout season one. We're back, them divas of the airways. So thank you for joining us tonight. Share this with someone in your circle. At Wings of Transformation Publishing, we are committed to helping our authors reach their goals and pursue their dreams of becoming published authors. We work closely with each author to ensure a successful publishing experience, and we are dedicated to helping them tell their stories in the most meaningful and impactful ways. We look forward to putting you on the path to writing your book. The book, A Song for Zipporah, written by David Harris, is a powerful historical fiction centering around the life and character of Moses' future wife, Zipporah, before they met. Book author David Harris brings the reader into the relationship between Moses and Zipporah, which was gradual and lush. The story unfolds beautifully when Moses finally asks Zipporah to marry him. Purchase your copy of the book detailing this authentic story, A Song for Zipporah by David Harris today. It's available online at Barnes and Noble and Amazon.com. Because I'm back. Welcome to the SC Book Gal and Friends Chat. We're going to be talking about the latest in book reviews, author interviews, and life. Come on in and join us. We're ready. Are you? I know you like that. I, I know you first you're saying, well, what is she doing there? So my sister, the the host of the late but not deny, Latonya Little John, wasn't feeling too well tonight. So guess what? You guys got me. SC Book Gal 843, Patrice Grimble. And guess what? We still gonna make it do what it do because we have an author. Y'all. This lady has me on my toes. And I'm telling y'all, sit back and just enjoy the ride. That's all I'm going to tell you. So I am going to introduce to you guys author Blossom Rogers. And she's going to talk about her books, her life, her deliverance, her She's just going to talk about it all, okay? So come on up, girly. Come on up. How you doing? Come on. Girl, hey there, girl. <laughs> I told y'all. It's already, look at it. See, all both of us tonight, y'all sit back and enjoy this ride. How you doing, girly? Listen, listen, listen. When I tell you God is good, I am doing well. I am doing well. Uh, first of all, I give God all the glory and honor. I thank you yes. for allowing me to share your platform. And we send in prayers to little mama. All is well. All yes. is well. Yes. she's. I know she's going to be tuning in. Hey, mama. So, Mrs. Blossom. Yeah, girl. You got to tell us about you first. Give us a little rundown. Uh-oh. Well, let me give us a little rundown. <laughs> Well, okay. so, my name is Blossom Blossom Rogers, a uh, truly grateful recovering addict. I smoked crack for 19 years, but God, I have 19 years clean. I am saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. I still love the Lord and he loves me. I'm not perfect, but I serve a perfect God. Uh all right. I am the proud mother of three grown sons, 13 grandbabies, and three great grandchildren. Um, hold up. Hold up. Yeah, that part. Th 13. 
Your well, boys believe in be fruitful and multiply. All right. <laughs> Took the word. And, to- I, and, and I started early. In two years, girl, I'll be 60 years old. So God is good. Uh, and smoke dope for 19 of them years. But you know what I tell people? You know, they say, how can you be so jolly? With it? Because I'm free. We got to remember when you could be true to yourself, you could be true to anybody else. Um, God bless you. I am the author of four books from Under Bridge One, from Under Bridge Two, and they laugh and when they laugh. I want somebody to catch this in the natural and in the spirit. We got two kinds of laughter. Are they laughing with us or at us? Okay. So yeah, I want y'all to catch that because now, now we got so much going on. You know, you got you think you have people that support you. Now I'm not gonna say I got some people that back me up, that'll fight with me. You understand me? But you get then you got some people that you in the boat and they're in the back sitting in the boat and putting holes in your boat with a butter knife, a plastic butter knife for that. So in this season, y'all, ask God to show you who's with you. Because we ain't got no time to be wasting it. You understand me? But right, like I said, right. I um I love telling my story. I love the things I've been through, I'm not going to say that they were easy, but we all know that everything works together for our good. For the ones that are called, the ones that love God and the ones that are called according to his purpose. We got to get that thing right. Um, in my first book, I talk about how I went through uh, molestation. And I want somebody to, to hear me real well. When we were children, when I was coming up, you could not go to school and tell the teachers nothing. We, 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 you better not go tell nobody nothing because African Americans, we are raised, whatever happens in the house stays in the house, but we're just as sick as our secrets. Okay. So, I about, yeah, yeah. Wow. You know, that was, that was yeah. a mouthful are, right there. Yeah. Because you know what? As long as we keep the secrets, that's what kept me out there for 19 years because I couldn't talk about it. And, and when we're, uh, uh go through abuse as a child, Will we ever have a natural uh, relationship? You understand me? Because our childhood is snatched from us. And, you know, they always say she's so fast. But why is that child acting like that? You know what I'm saying? So we got, yeah, we got to stop. But then you guys also remember, too, that you're dealing with generational curses as well. And I and I believe in my heart that God has raised me up to break that. Um, I had I was on a show last weekend and, and the pastor asked me, he said, Blossom, what kind of cobbles that you slept in up under the bridge? It was a 1993 dynasty. He said, well, God is allowing you to create a dynasty for your generation. So it's full circle. So y'all, why are we here on this earth? Are we going to barbecue a meal? Do it. When we stand before the Lord, we can't say they was going to get mad with me if I did this. The books are not to hurt anybody. The books are to help somebody. You know what I'm saying? So okay. book one, I talk about going through the molestation. And for anybody who went through it, if we were children, it was not our fault. And long as you continue to keep covering it, covering it up or sweeping it up under the rug, eventually you're not going to be able to walk on that rug because so many humps and bumps in it. Columbia. So, so um, I talk about getting pregnant at an early age because... As we know, a baby don't keep a man. I talk about how I got married at an early age because my first husband was in the military. I said, money, travel, I can get away from home. But at times, we run, we can't run away from ourselves because sometimes we the problem, okay? I'm just saying, I'm talking about Blossom now. And then I talk about um, how I met a guy who was already on crack cocaine. And I don't know why, let me tell you, say Blossom, we think we could change people. We can't change ourselves. It takes God. So, <laughs> in the, you know, in the, in the club, I, and I don't know why you get in the club and you get to looking in the mirror, dancing to yourself. And I looked over my shoulder, and there he was. That thing was fine as all out though. And he, <laughs> he was smoking crack, you know. And then I used to think, let me tell this right, I used to think that if a guy didn't beat you, he didn't love you. So when he started beating me and taking my money, I said, well, if I can't beat him, I might as well join him. Because you got to remember, I didn't know where I belonged because my childhood had been snatched and messed up. The, you know, the enemy had already peeped into my future. He said, let me start messing with her now. Anytime you have an assignment or anytime that you have been picked out to be picked on, the enemy is going to try to do his best to destroy Yes. He's going to so, try, try to destroy you. Yeah, yeah. But like I said, one thing we have to remember, the enemy, 
Anytime God calls you, anything that we do for the Lord, it shall last. Now, is it going to feel good? No, it's not. But you, we got to continue. If you got to wipe a tear, keep going. And I'm, I just want to encourage somebody tonight. Keep going. Don't stop. Don't stop. Yeah, we're going to fall short, but don't stay down there in it. You know what I'm saying? And stop letting people make it see. God, you know what? God called us. Stop letting these sisters, sister uh, flip-flop and sister plump tell you what you can't do. You understand me? Because, you, uh, you know, let me tell you, I used to have yeah, sister flip-flop and sister plump. Yeah. I actually have y'all ready because I wasn't ready for that one. <laughs> we, you know, we got to stop allowing because we're going to be accountable when God come back because we sitting here and be judging people. You know, they want to they want to clean the fish, then catch it. You can't do that. You got to let God. God's the one that, uh, that can clean. So uh, book number two, I talk about how I've been to prison. My prison number is 589931. I had that number for the rest of my life. It's just not a functioning number. When I went to prison, we was chopping trees. One girl on one side, one on the other side. So I did some hard time. Mm -hmm. um, I talk about how I had a man to leave me for another man. I also talk about how, and I'm not judging nobody. I'm talking, and everything I'm talking about, I'm talking about Blossom story. Okay. I um, was delivered from a homosexual lifestyle because of being molested and raped. Blossom thought that going with a woman was the right life for her. I can't, right. I ain't got no heaven or no hell to put nobody in. I also talk about when my brother was in prison, how he I, he died and I couldn't come home to the funeral. So I had I had a lot of crutches to keep me on crack cocaine because I didn't want to, you know, some people say you got you got to hurt in order to heal. You know how them old people say, girl, take that bandaid off and go out there and play because some little dirt got to get it. You got to get, you got, it's got to be for the clean inside heal. out, yes. not, not the outside in. So I also talk about, um, I did so much. I did, let me tell you one thing, like I told you earlier, I smoked dope. I didn't play with it. Either you're going to do, I don't like to be around anybody who say they fitna do something. How you spell fitna? Either we're going to do it or we're do not. It or you're not going to do it. That part. Those are your choices. That, that part right there. So I also talk about, in my books, I talk about, I did everything out there but slept with an animal, and that was just the butt. Because if the dope boy would have said blossom, I'll give you an ounce if you sleep with Lassie. You know that commercial that say give 19 cents a day for the dog because his eye out? That would have been Lassie if he would have helped me got my dope. Because I'm I'm still a hustler, you understand me? But I hustle for God. You know, a lot of people say, how do you get on all these shows and stuff? Do you have a... A, a PR or a manager? No, I have God, and I'm in the same way I used to knock on dope boy doors. Can I do this or do that to get a hit of crack? It's the same way I do with TV shows. I go in the inbox. If I'm coming in your inbox, I'm coming in there for about something. I ain't coming in there for no games. So that's right, how God right. messes me to get on shows to tell my story because it's my story. You know what I'm saying? And um, nobody can tell it better than you. Nobody. And that one thing I'm not gonna lie on anybody. Um, and each time he allows me to speak, it's more and more healing. Okay. So for 19 years is a long time. So it's, it's not just going to disappear overnight. You know what I'm saying? So I'll be on the battlefield to the day God calls me home. When, when, when I stand before the Lord, I want to hear well done. I, I don't want to because I don't have so many other people to reject me. I don't want God to reject me. You understand what I'm saying? I, I want so much out of life. The same way I used to hustle, get that dope. That's the same way I want life. I do not want to die and have never lived. You understand me? You, you said something and it, I, I hope people are listening that you can explain, you cannot expect your deliverance to happen overnight. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. didn't get into what you got into overnight. Yeah. So you can't expect that to happen overnight. And for me, that was one of my problems. I was mm -hmm. like, okay, God, deliver me. Okay, you know, God, my heart is broken. Da, 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 da. I'll never forget a lady told me, she said, the first step was to wipe your face. Now, mm -hmm. that, it, that was a lot to get out of me. Then on, you said something else before we even got online. That one stick with me. You said, don't let nobody bring your past up to you. I always tell my kids this. Your past is your past. And only you can let it dictate your future. You, and you know what? Because I, I, when people know about me, um, you, you have to 
God has to give you tough skin because some people can say some hurting things. And, and some of the stuff I did, I did. I ain't finna tell no lie. I did, I did it. But I let people know, you ain't read the whole book. You better stop playing with me. I hate, I despise anybody that talks at me instead of to me. Yes. Don't get it twisted. I'm saved, but I'm not soft. Please don't get it twisted. And I tell a lot of people, just because I'm quiet. See, I was a fighter when I was out there. I, okay. I was just fighting. All the police officers knew me. That's the kind of, I, you know, Felicia on Friday, she ain't have nothing on me. Do you understand? Oh, wow. Oh, Man, wow. <laughs> I would go up and ask you, can I borrow your riding lawnmower? You and I would steal from you and sell you your stuff back to you. People used to hate to hear me you know how some people look at the blind and say, oh, here come Mary. They would look at the blind and say, here come Blossom. They pick their whole house up and move. <laughs> <laughs> I was a mean crackhead. And I was a mean, wow. You know what I'm saying? I started drinking at the age of five. My great grandmother was raised that if a child has a wean worm, you give them beer. So some children fell in love with a horse on a merry-go-round or a parade. My nickname was Monkey. She said, Monkey, go get your medicine. And girl, I would run. I don't know why them old people got them long go hauls. But baby, I'll be wide open. And it took both my little hands to open up the refrigerator. And when I opened up the refrigerator, there was Coke 45. You know that horse was sitting up there like that. Yep. And Captain Morgan, we he don't owe me a thing because me and him had a good time when we was out there. But I tell people, a lot of people say, How can you talk about it so freely? Because I'm free. Yes. And, God, and God taught me how to for, to forgive my abuser. Because I'm going to tell you one thing. Hurt people hurt people. The person did not grow up saying they wanted to molest a child. Just like I oh didn't. Because see, people. I was an unfit mother. I was not like leaving a beaver's mama with an apron on and vacuum. Because I done sold that. So I know I didn't have it. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I had to forgive myself for not being there for my son. So and it took a minute for them to stop looking at me cockeyed. So let me ask you a question. So forgiving yourself, how hard was that? Because it's I know process. that I'm it's even still in the process of doing that, forgiving myself. It's and some process. days it can be easy. And some days it's like, I don't even want to look in the mirror because it's like, I cannot believe this craziness. So how hard is it? It is it's a process because still the enemy still wants to bring stuff back. You know, he's a accuser of the brothering, you know what I'm saying? I remember hearing my baby calling me old mama one time. Sometimes when I think about stuff like that, or he'll throw it back, but we have to remind ourselves God has forgiven us for that. You know what I'm saying? We don't if God if God forgave us, who are we to not forgive ourselves? Are we saying mm. better than him? See what I'm saying? He said, mm. When we try to bring it back up, he said, I'm, and I'm paraphrasing everything because I don't want nobody to say, oh, she's changing the words in the Bible. But he's saying, if I forgot about it, what you still talking about? You understand me? Mm. So, so keep Whoa. that. You keep that. You know what I'm saying? God, when he forgives us, he throws it in the lake of forgiveness. He don't know what we're talking about. He don't wipe his eye. What, what is she talking about? And that's the enemy wants to make us continue. That's what kept me out there because I didn't know how to forgive myself. I always, and I, I tell everybody, if I see somebody walking with their head down, pick your head up because there's nothing down there and there's nothing behind you. It's all in front of you. You understand me? And we all got a bridge. My bridge might not be yours and yours might not be mine, but we all got a bridge. Yep. Come from up on that bridge, walk over that bridge to your destiny. The enemy does, the enemy despises connection. He despises it. So that's why he keeps conflict going on. Like with us, us queens at times. See, there's nothing wrong with me telling you you're a beautiful person because I ain't going to take nothing from me. So mm -hmm. you got to know who you are and who you belong to. My name Blossom and I belong to him. Am I perfect? No. When I get out of line, he's, he, you know how them old people used to get them old switches and chap you on them thighs to get mm -hmm. you back in line? That's what he do. He doesn't, he doesn't chastise a bastard. You understand me? So like I said, y'all, we got the I see you pick your mouth up, boo boo. Pick, pick. Girl, girl, girl this, this flapping in the wind, this flapping. This, it, it's crazy because you're saying that we queens. So I went to an event today at my daughter's school, and it was called Black Girl Magic, Black Boy Joy. Okay. Mm -hmm. All the kids were together, and first they were talking about our careers, African Americans and in, in the careers. And, um, then they separated the groups. 
the boys and the girls. I was like, okay, what are we doing? She started explaining, uh, Mrs. White, which is one of the teachers at school, she was like, little girls, we do not have to put each other's down. We are all queen. And she just started spitting it out. And we, the parents, like, yes, please tell them that again. Mm -hmm. And the crazy thing about it is my daughter and her little friend just had a falling out right before I got to the school. Wow. Lo and behold, they're sitting on there and they're listening to this. <coughs> and I turn away to turn back to see them hugging each other and saying they're sorry. See? So if these kids can do this and uplift each other, we should be able, and that's why I love the crew that I am with. I love the crew. Uh, I, I love the fact that we all look out for each other. Like, let's try because, you know, feeling well, Tricia, can, I got you. And when we was growing up, it took a village to raise us because back then, yeah, all the villages. Because the big mamas are in the clubs now. They not they don't they not showing about how to cut up no collard greens or do a turkey or do a stuffing. They in the clubs, you know. We're trying to get okay. their boots. Okay. Trying to get their boots. Okay. So when I was coming up, the next door neighbor beat you, then the next door neighbor beat you, then mama beat you. We like, dog, how many beams I'ma get? And, and we could not talk about if Miss Sarah lied on you, you better not call Miss Sarah a lie. You whole whole head is snatched off. <laughs> what? That's my mom used to take, my, uh, take my, my eyes out my head and make me look at myself. What you did? Who did what? I, oh. I listen. When I went to the penitentiary, it wasn't hard for me to say yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am, because it started at home. My great grandmother and my mother did not play the radio. They would you come ah. in the room and and not open your mouth or Good when she had company come over. And you sitting there looking in their mouth, whole foot that hit you in the face. You don't know what happened. But Man. now, these kids are telling you, that ain't where I heard it. You got it all wrong. Or you see the mother and the daughter, they dressed the light with, that's why we got so much. Now, don't get me wrong. Yeah, I did a lot of things out there, but I was taught at home, though. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So it, 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 I got out there, and I had to get out there, because if I wanted to smoke, I had to get out there and get it like drag. You know, because no, in the beginning, they give you the stuff, but then Later on, you got to do what you got to do. And I did everything out there but slept with an animal. And that was just to get. How can I talk so freely? Because each time I speak that, it's more and more deliverance. Yeah. I, had to, I had to deal with this for the rest of my life. But I don't have to smoke the rest of my life. You know, and even though I have a clean time, um, 19 years, June the 4th, I have 20 years clean. I'm... I'm I live in Alabama, and I so I moved to Alabama from North Miami. Okay, so when I moved to Alabama, I was married. Now mm -hmm. I had the woman to call me. We got a divorce due to love, and they say love you because he loved talking to other women. Brought another woman in my home. See, I was the kind of crackhead that got de bird dead. Let's go get high. That, that's the kind of person I, I I didn't need a reason. But when that woman called me and told me she had been in my home. I had to really call out to the Lord, cry out to the Lord, because I had the most seasoned saints, Sister Flip Flop and Sister Knock Knock, telling me to stay with that man. Well, if you dealt with Bubba doing that for the years, I don't have to do that. I dealt with it back then because I was on dope and I thought I ain't, couldn't do no better. You know, that's why you got to love yourself. When I was coming up, uh, we was at a house party, and, and my cousin, he's dead and gone, and I had a bag of, uh, had a bowl, try to be a you know, hostess, broken up tailor chips. He said, sit out somewhere, baby, bubble lip. I cried. Oh, I cried. I want the lip operation at the age of 11. But look at these women out. Women are going to get their lips blown up. All I got to do is line, lip, and roll. You got, <laughs> you got you, you, you. Girl, you better. I used to have dreads down to my thighs because they represent my clean time. Now I'm dealing with a girl called alopecia. Baby, me and alopecia, we we rock on. You got to love this. I'm not saying be con conceited or high-minded, but you got to look in the mirror and be able to say, girl, I love you. You look oh so Oh, my God. Good. My favorite song, I love me better than that. Oh, my. That's my song. You you got to. And I tell everybody, when I get that good girl, y'all better, better look out and be snatched. She's a good girl. No, she's a good girl. No, Jesus. She said so, you know, each time he allows me to tell my story, you know, I, I love to laugh because I was the I was the class clown. And I I tell people, 
They, my teachers used to start with you, Blossom, sit down. You're talking too much. But your gifts will make room for you, but your character will keep you in the room. See, people don't realize that you caught that. Your character will keep you in the room. Are they happy to see you leave or happy to see you coming? You understand me? I, I've been on both sides. I've been on both sides. So like I said, you, you love the Lord. Love yourself. And, do, and help who you can. Stop. We have to stop putting people before what, what's good for us. Because everybody's not going to pat you on the back and say you're doing a good job. You better encourage yourself. You understand me? Before I go on shows, I always say, Lord, let me decrease so that you can increase. People are going to pick up stuff and, and throw it back out there. Girl, she said she used to live with women. Yeah, I had one lady do that one time. And I looked at her face and I had to get my mind together because I wanted to say some choice words that wasn't choicey. You understand me? But I, I, I made this statement. If you if you ever had a man, he went and cheated with somebody else and came back home to you, that's a threesome. It Don't get it twisted. You know what I'm saying? So, And I put all this in the book to let people know. If I put out there on page 43, I don't care what you say or think about me because it's deliverance. Yeah, don't make me put my hat upon it to make this bang. I already told you. Don't make girl. I would put it in the. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> people used to hate. Listen, I got so depressed one time. I set the house on fire with me in it. So I tell them, do you think I care about setting the fire with you? God changed me. Not no man. Not no woman. I got tired of being beat up by men, by women, myself. And I was always fighting like that. But you know what? In reality, I was fighting myself. I was fighting myself. Mm -hmm. So when God blessed me to, um, I went from treatment to treatment, prison, jail, rehab, mental hospital, I dealt with mental illness as well. And y'all, mental illness is real. We got to stop making it seem like it don't exist. Deal with it. Because, you know, back in our days, if we had an auntie that sat at the Thanksgiving dinner, dinner table hollering, they would put in the back room and go back to eating pushing it up under the rug. You know what I'm saying? So I've been in mental hospital, been on medication. Um, in Florida, if you have an addiction, they give you a check. So when I found out you can get a check. Oh, Lord. No. Baby, I went, I went in. My girlfriend, when she told me about it, I said, girl, how you get a check? She said, Blossom, you got to act like you're crazy. I said, no, nah, they might lock me away forever. So, But baby, I went through it. I, I had to go because I... I didn't tell lies. I hummed them. You know what I'm saying? Mm, I, I, that's the kind of person I was. But when they gave me that money, they gave me back pay $7,760.19. Girl, I got scared. I thought it was going to find me somewhere there. When we smoked, we had so much of smoke coming out the hotel. They thought we was Indians in there. That's just how much of smoke was going on. We, I didn't play with it. For me to be sitting here tonight in my right mind, don't have a bib or a diaper on. Picking flowers, can't nobody see but me. And scratching the ears that's not itching. It's by the grace of God. Because I was smoking five to six hundred dollars a day or more. Mm. Mm. I smoked dope. But the God that I served, he when he when I was in the crack house, because I had joined the church and then I backslid. So when you cut backslide, it's seven times worse. So I was sitting there in the crack house, and I still had the shirt, the shoes, and the purse that I had on that night when he called me out of the crack house. And I started, I was in the room with everybody, but then I wanted to get away. I knew it was something happening. It was a totally different change coming. I had been up for about two weeks, still trying to get high, but I wasn't high. So mm -hmm. I went into the kitchen, and I had a piece of paper and pencil in my purse. And I started writing God a letter. And you know what people ask? Girl, you was writing God while you smoking crack. If he waited for the woman at the well, he knew where I was. Okay. Okay. What? You, people were talking about when I found Jesus. Jesus was never lost. I was the one that was in the dope hole. <laughs> but no, no, no matter how good we, far we get, his hand is long enough to reach us. You understand me? So I was sitting there smoking and writing. Smoking and writing, and the girl came in to give another hit of crack. And she said, I said, the next time you see me, I'll be clean and sober. And she laughed. See, she was laughing at me, not with me. Okay, so I kept writing, smoking, and I took that last hit. I hadn't been up for two weeks, I was so tired, my eyelashes was tired. 
feet was hurting me. My mind was hurting me. I just wanted to be delivered. Too scared to live and too scared to die. I was the kind of person, I remember one time I tried to kill myself with a gun, but I made sure there was a bullet in there. That's the kind of person I was. When I had took a, a bottle of pills, I made sure they knew what kind. Of, see, I was just talking about blossom. You understand me? I, 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 that's why I don't want to die and have not lived. I want so much out of life. I want to be able to leave my kids something because a wise pre person leaves a uh, inheritance for sure. their generation. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. Not just money, but I want to leave them wisdom as well. When people try to throw their mama pass up, yeah, she did that, but this is what she did with the rest of her life. There you, you know? go. So God bless it. I got up and walked out that crack house and I checked myself into the whole, into the mental hospital and I begged the people don't let me go until you find me a place. And that and God did. God sent me to Miami. That's where I went to treatment at. Because I was born and raised by a town in Daytona Beach. And I said, okay. if I get down here in Miami and try to do the same thing I did back home, they're gonna kill me down here. So God bless me. Got clean, sober, but I didn't go back to the people, places, and things. That's with anything. When you want to change, you can't go back around it. You and can. I can't judge you. You know how some people talk about, you know, I smoke crap, but you did powder. Or you eat a pound cake, and I eat lemon cake. It's the same thing. We all doing something we ain't got no business doing. You understand me? Right. But let's work together to try to help one another. That's what it's about. So God bless you. Got married, moved here. Went through the divorce, but I didn't go back to getting high. Very first time buying a home, lost at the foreclosure, but I didn't go back to getting high. Brand new car, repo, but I didn't go back to getting high. So God bless me. Then the book started opening. God bless me. I was on Pastor Clifford Dollar show, and we was like, he said, Blossom, if you're not a comedian, you should be. That's a millionaire. You understand me? Back yes, in the day, he got to his shoe and sold them back to him. But God. So God bless me, did five projects with TBN. I've had my own TV show, my own radio show. All this is because of the grace of God. I work for the University of Alabama. Let me tell you, when God opened that door for me, I went to school in Miami, got my diploma down there. I worked on so many jobs with that diploma, state jobs, government. This. So when the University of Alabama, I'm talking about the God we serve. Yes. They, when they did my background check, that's when they found that the diploma was a fraud. But the God we serve in 2020, they say y'all can hire her, but she got a year to get her diploma. Who do stuff like that? But the God we serve, though, he'll show you favor. So I got my diploma in uh, 90 days. So I have an Isaac and I have an Ishmael. You understand me? So then when they did my background check, my supervisor, she said, Blossom. I said, yeah. She said, your background check came back. I'm, I know what's on the background check because I did it. <laughs> so she's like, it came back eight pages. You think they made a mistake? No, ma'am, they ain't made a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Everything to the period, to the side of the paper, top of the paper, I did it. You know what I'm saying? So like I said, you know, then God bless and start. I went before Habitat because if we don't have a safe place, we'll go back to the people, places, and things. Yes, so I went yes. before Habitat, and I was asking them, could they build me a home for women that want to stay clean and sober? But the God we serve, because I'm a nonprofit organization from Under Bridge Safe Haven Home for Women. So the God that we serve, when I got my status, she said, Blossom, I met with the board. I met, they, I met with the board. We can't build the house but we're going to give you a piece of land that we're never going to use. So I have my land. I have my blueprints. I have my builder permit. I have been approved by God in the city. We get the house six, uh, six women said three women. So the first house will be called from under bridge, safe Haven home for women. Mm -hmm. say eight months to a year. My second home will be called tears from under bridge because I cried many tears up under that bridge. And that'll be for women and children. Like I said, I want to leave a legacy so when I'm dead and gone 10 years after my death, what what kind of what kind of mark did we make here on the earth? There you, know you go. There what, you go. We're going to heaven. You know the Lord, you confess that, she, that he's the Lord of the Lord. But what did you leave here on this earth? I don't want to leave 58, 99, 31. That's my prison number. I don't want to leave that. So like the like the man of God told me last week, he said, you slept in a dynasty, but God's preparing you to leave a dynasty. And that's what I want to do for my generation. I want last year, this time in my hometown, the park that everybody used to get high in and 
this guy got killed out there. They cleaned it up. So Mary Bethune McLeod's first little house that she started her college in, they bought okay. it and put it inside the park. But we also have um, Miss Mary Harrell um, Black Historical Museum. So this time last year, five other women and myself were put into that museum. So when my kids, when my grandkids and my great grand and my great grand, when they go through that museum, they're gonna see their grandmama sitting up on the wall, not no prison number, but they're gonna see me up there with my book. But this is the same town that spit on me and kicked me and said I wouldn't amount to nothing. So that's why we can't worry about what people say. Who would have thought that I'd have been sitting on the wall in the same hometown. <laughs> and then God bless it, November, my, my documentary came out from under a bridge. And I just found out yesterday that I've been nominated for uh, best documentary um, in June. So please keep me in prayer. I'm so excited. Mm -hmm. I, <laughs> you know, but I'm the one that came from up under the bridge. You understand me? I'm the crackhead. I'm the, you know, this, I'm the... Man can say whatever. It's what God, God says. says. You understand me? So in June, uh, God's will, uh, I'll be going to uh, Virginia. Um, and like I said, when when the director, because she's won many awards, and I'm still, she you know, she's telling me, and I'm still floating. I'm like, we got picked. <laughs> but so, baby, you know I'm going to have that tight girl to own. So when they do call from under the bridge, I'll be able to go up there. Baby, I'm a strut. You and those girdles. <laughs> Baby, I'm Where you a buy yours from? See, Baby. I get mine from Lee and Bryant. Where you get yours from? Baby, I'm going I'm to check out Lee now. I'm going to check out mm -hmm. her. Because I don't mm -hmm. want nothing hanging. I want her to be nice and tight when I walk up there. I, think about it. I smoke dope. I've been to prison. Yes. And God bless it. My life story is on the screen. Nominated for best document. And I'm a millionaire. And I tell everybody. It's gonna be a movie. It, it's gonna be a movie. I tell people, don't forget the name Blossom because it's, it's gonna it's gonna be re it's real. You got to encourage yourself, yes. not being cocky, but you, you got have to, to be yourself. your number one supporter. You, how Angela always tell us, we have to show up for ourselves first. And, and if you can, showed up tonight, girl. <laughs> I got to be real with Blossom so that way I could be real with anybody else. And it is well. It is well. So like I said, uh, my name is Blossom Rogers. And if you want to uh, reach out to me, my phone number is 305-753-8164. You can hit me up on Facebook. You can hit me up on Instagram, Blossom Rogers. I love to talk. If you need a speaker, give me a call. I'll, I'll, <laughs> run, I'll be right there with my girdle. But other than that, I've had a great time hanging out with you on this Friday night. You know, you know you're coming back. So we're going to have her on my show show you guys may what we say may 4th may 4th may 4th so she's gonna be on my show again you're <laughs> i can't the energy that you have the blessings that are on you amen if you can amen. only it's it's this this season everybody i've had mm -hmm. on the show my show so far has just given me confirmations like, okay, Trace, look, you, you, hey, God got you. He, he I'm, I'm gonna show you in this person what I'm supposed to tell you. I'm gonna show you in this person since you don't want to listen to me, Trace. I'm gonna get these other people to come on your show yeah. and you're gonna listen to them and you're gonna walk away every show with a piece of nugget. And I appreciate the nuggets you have given me, amen. By the grace of God, I by the grace it. of God, I, I got a, a shout out to my family and uh, the young lady, her name is Amanda, and uh. She she told me some stuff a while back and it started to come. And like I said, you know, it's just truly a blessing where people can speak positive stuff into your life. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Um, but I, I ask that God show you favor for hanging out with me and just and just just trusting and, and loving me for who I am. You know what I'm saying? I, I ask God to show you favor because everybody's going through something. And I ask that God just enlarge your territory. And, We'll be seeing each other on May, May the 4th. Yes, so, we will, but we're going to have some fun again. I've, I've been to have my girl by the end, so. so yeah, I'm, I might have to go get me another one. 
<laughs> I think it might be having a whole episode with that one, but you know. <laughs> but thank you for coming on, you guys. We want to thank you for being with us tonight. Y'all go replay this one. There were so many different nuggets in this show. Catch the replay. Go back and listen to it again. Motivate yourself. Show up for yourself because if you show up, God is already there. He just waiting for us to do it. He's just waiting for us to do it. See God move me for you, trees. Girl, Latanya, I think so. <laughs> I truly think so. Amen. Bless I, her. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. It's you all guys. because of God, his grace and his mercy. Oh, and you know what? Let me tell y'all something. I actually had a slideshow made tonight. Like I was going to talk about children's literacy. And when she popped on, I was like, okay, okay. How are we going to do this? How are we going to do this? I got nervous. And then I was like, nervous what, Therese? Why? And you just now, came in and just, you know, like, because, yo. Because, you, you know, that's what it's called supporting one another. It's a village. It, this was a village tonight. It's a family. village. And I'm uh, just it's talking to people like, where are the villages? I'm looking for the villages. I want to be in the villages. Because I remember when I grew up, it was a village. And it yeah. was so much love. So, Blossom, you part of my village. Can I come in yours? Oh, no. Come on, baby. <laughs> but you, now you cut up or I got a switch for you. Okay? Uh, cut up and I got a switch for you. Well, you might Matter of fact, ahead. I'll make you go pull your own, and it better come back right. You know how them old people say, "Go out and get your switch." And if you come back with the small one, they, they go, to you pull it. go back, and they and keep the making juice, juice still running out the switch because they don't want to pull it from the ground. Okay. Them the kind of beatings, okay. them the kind of beatings I remember. And and they give you the opportunity to take twigs off, but if they gotta get it, you got the twigs on it. Don't let them plant it up. Oh my lord! <laughs> and this way <laughs> <I> is. <laughs> Thank you guys for being here tonight. Tomorrow I will be on again at 8 o'clock. I will have guest author Tasha Wrights, and she will be talking about her African American erotic book called Strange Addiction. So that's tomorrow night at 8 p.m. And then next week, you guys, we are talking children's literature. Let's get our kids back to reading. If you guys can only know the statistics that I've seen when it comes to our babies, African-American and children of color, and how we are lacking when it comes to just general reading skills. So yeah. all next week on my pages, we will be featuring children's books, and we will be giving away some children's books. Yeah. So tune in. Thank you again, Miss Blossom. You guys have a wonderful night. Good night. Bye. Thank you for joining us tonight. We hope you found a new book to read or a new author to explore. Join us again in two weeks for SC Book Gals and Friends Chat. Have a good evening. Bye.